So, hello, Adam. Adam Syrup. Yes. That's correct. Like okay. stuff, yeah. Now, Adam, I've been dying to come and chat with you for a little while. You won an award, BAFTA, a BAFTA award for the work that you've done around video games with opportunities for young people. You must be so proud of such an achievement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shocked, surprised, um, a little bit amused. Yeah, so BAFTA have, um, they, they have the film, television, all the big stuff. Um, they have games because games are now sort of, the business of games is sort of getting bigger than film. Um, but they also really want to develop young talent. So they have the Young Games Designer Awards and the Young Film Awards and the Young Television Awards. And so within the Young Games Designer Awards, there's actually an award for a mentor, people who inspire young people into game design. And so Impact Gamers and, uh, won that award back in um, 2018. So yeah, very exciting. So today I've brought a young audience with me. Some of them are 11, some are 14 years old, some are slightly older, younger. Yep. And they'll be wondering where on earth in the world you may be. So can you tell us a little bit about like where you live in the world or? Yeah. Yeah. So in in I've been in Bradford since 2000, came here for university. Um, I live in the BD6 area, which is South Bradford, but I work in BD5, which is a bit more central uh, around West Bowling. And so you said you came to Bradford. Like, what age were you when you came to Bradford? Yeah, 18. I went. I came came from down down south in Cardiff um, up to Bradford, age 18, to study computer animation and special effects. I I love working with computers. I love doing things that are creative um, and there was only two computer animation courses back in 2000 Bournemouth and Bradford um, and Bradford was just the friendlier place so I chose that. Gosh that's that's quite incredible because I think some people watching this would think if you really want to you know win awards it, 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 you know in video games or study you'd have to get out of Bradford as quickly as you can you're you did the opposite you you've come from South Wales yeah. into England to yeah. Yorkshire to Bradford to study in you know in, in video games and, and, and that sort of thing here so that was at the university is that right yeah. so yeah I studied uh, computer animation and special effects but it was part of a, a whole department which had uh, games design and video production um, and so um, you got got to learn a lot of those skills at the same time. It was a very multimedia course, yeah. So you, I think you said a moment ago that was like nearly 20 years ago when it, you came? Yeah, it was half my life ago, yeah. So do you think that those courses have now finished at university or...? No, 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 no. I went to the university um, last year. They invited me in um, and I got to speak to some some games development students there They're still doing games design still doing cybernetics and really uh, exciting <laughs> stuff really groundbreaking things there um and programming and stuff like that but still still computer animation still games design still happening just in a school of informatics now so i'm trying to imagine now in my head i'm trying to think back to you 20 years ago at the age of 18 yeah. just prior to because that's a big risk to leave your your family home to travel you know, from Wales to England to Bradford in yeah. Yorkshire. Yeah. Did, like, how did you know? Were you, were you obsessed about computers and video games? Were you studying things at school? Were all your teachers going, oh, Adam, you know, you need to go and work and study in video games? No? No one, no one, knew, that the, no one knew that those courses existed. Uh, we had a careers advice tutor who, um, like, I, they said, oh, sort of like, what things are you interested in, stuff like that, trying to work out what career would be a good thing for you, which is sort of, uh, so like, you know, it happens quite a, a lot, I suppose, in your later high school years. Um, you know, what courses should you take? What sh what things you should do? And I was like, I want to do computer animation, and they just looked at me saying, "Is is is there are there courses?" <laughs> and so I had to do a bit of the research. But I, I made the I made the horrible choice of choosing when I when I went from GCSE to A level, I chose the A levels that I thought would be easiest for me. Like I was quite. I'm quite mathematical, so I chose uh, maths, physics, computing, and art. Um, I, I love, I love art. I don't think I'm great at it, but I love it. Um, but then, um, just the coursework for art, I was doing a, an AS, a half A level, um, and uh, the coursework was the same as the full A level. And I wanted to do other stuff. I was interested. I had groups and clubs that I wanted to be part of, so I dropped the art, and I had the most boring two years of my life doing mathematical stuff when I wanted to be creating things and I just I just when I went to uni I 
I was not going to do computer programming. It was something that I can do and I do do, but it doesn't it doesn't fulfill me. It doesn't make me happy each day. It's very repetitive in terms of this, this, this and, and that's I like things being different all the time. And that's how I ended up uh, where I am with Impact Gamers because I like I, different things. I wonder, did we have the same career advisor? Because I wanted to go into design or architecture, and I, I, they told me maths and physics, maths and physics. So I was learning all about yeah. mechanics and equilibrium and all these yeah. kind of things. Now, maybe if I'd gone for a career into video games, physics and mechanics might have actually proved useful rather than computer science is the the path I went down. Yeah. So, so you, you left university a few years later, and then yep. what? You got a job in the video games industry. You no. develop apps for consoles, or no? No, 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 no. no. Um, I, I am, um, I kind of, I fell in love with the city of Bradford, um, and sort of um, made some really good friends who are doing community work, um, and ended up being um, so. Uh, it's like a pupil referral unit it's for kids who are struggling in education, um, and. Uh, have to have to sort of have a different type of schooling i ended up being a tutor there um and i ended up sort of doing a lot more kind of youth worky stuff but all the time i had loads of freedom about how i taught things so we did it through we did taught through skills through uh filming and editing um by doing some game making and i use game making because coding and programming uh, and game making are, are, are different it's uh you know it's a you know, it, it it's very technical to be coding and, and programming, but game making is much more expressive and creative. There's more art involved. There's more English and storyline and stuff like that. Um, and so within a games design environment, you, you're likely to find something that suits you. You might really like the uh, the game testing and reviewing and trying to break the game. You might really like the design. You might really like the planning of the story. You might like the artwork of creating the characters. But it all pieces together in this, like I've said, multimedia before. This multimedia way um, to to create an end product. And so um, we used some software just that made it much simpler. So there wasn't much coding, but a lot of games design aspect. So. You mentioned earlier when we were talking about the BAFTA Mentor Award, you said Impact Gamers. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever been to Impact Gamers. Could, somebody watching this, they may not have heard of it. No. What, tell them what is it? Is it for everybody? Yeah, what well, be- yeah, I, it, it is for everybody. But we work with young people, so uh, we work from seven to to eighteen year olds. Um, and uh, what we do is we're there to inspire young people to be creative with computers. And we use game making for that. Um, it's The game making is part of what we do. Um, but the other thing is that we're, we're there as a, as a group. So we're there as a sort of social entity. We're there um, to, um, to improve self-esteem. We're there to um, uh, sort of grow their confidence in different things. Um, but at the same time, teaching them skills as well. We want them to go to Impact Gamers and make friends and um, and make games at the same time. So it's not just lots of people sat down all coding on their keyboards. No, 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 no. 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 What, I, what I wanted it to be is I wanted it to be um, so like you have the football club for the sporty people, and they go and they 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 build friendships, they build relationships, they sort of like they have some socials in there as well. Um, I wanted that for the kids who just aren't sporty. I was so bad at sport, but there was no you know there's a chess club, but there wasn't any middle ground. So there was this sort of like uh, the people who are just you know not sporty but very. Um, I don't know what chess sort of like problem solving and stuff, but there wasn't anything, you know, there wasn't any groups that were more creative. So forgive me for asking, but why would somebody physically need to come along? I mean, there's there's lots of online party social games, you know. Could they not do this in Fortnite or uh you know, even in a sort of uh sand what's Box. it called? Sandbox. sandbox environment yeah. like just yeah. hang out with each other and sit around and just not shoot each other instead yeah. <laughs> could they not do that instead they, they could they could do that i tell you what it's very tricky um to actually complete anything when you haven't got someone there to mentor you to someone to support you um, ah, so, okay. so yeah so that that's if i probably started about 
making 30 to 40 different games over my teenage years. I completed making them. I probably completed one, but not as well as I wanted to. Because you change ideas or you get stuck, something happens and you just you just give up on it. And um, and you haven't got someone to, to guide you along and say, this is what you should, this is how you could improve it, and this is what you could do. And you haven't got the encouragement. So you get a bit, get to a right. boring bit of the game. I get maybe. you now. So this would this be like the Obi-Wan character oh, in Star yeah. Wars yeah, and we're, Luke? We're totally the Jedi Masters and the Padawan. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Luke is like, I'm not sure if I can be a Jedi and how do I use this lightsaber thing? And then... And we teach Luke. the way to the Force. That's exactly, that's the best way to describe Impact Gamers. Yeah. Okay. And that's what you got the award for, the mentoring. Yeah. Ah, you see, you see, see, some people I've spoken to have said, oh, you don't need to go to these things. There's so many YouTube tutorials. There's this Unity course you can follow and you can learn all that stuff yourself at home. But you're yeah. saying, well, that's useful, Alan. But if you don't have a mentor, you're going to start lots of things and never finish or yeah. complete or achieve anything. Yeah. Is that, I, is that what yeah, exactly. Like in going to university, I could have learned those things at home, but I didn't. You know, I had course tutors. I had people alongside me at the university doing the same things to bounce ideas off and, you know, to to check up on me sort of like to why weren't you at the lecture or, or whatever, like those, those things. So um, and I had coursework deadlines and. I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not that type of person who can set a deadline that big or that difficult and uh, say, oh, next year I want to have made a a, a new game by myself. Um, I, I need some people around me to to do that, work as a team. I'm really, I'm really buying into this idea of this because I can imagine, um, like somebody starting off something new, but the mentor is there, not necessarily to reprimand or tell them off, but like, oh. Yeah, that's that's really good, Adam. But have you considered this, and and how might that lead to this, and what do you what's your plan B? You know, if that doesn't work out, yeah. And especially for like, if there's somebody watching and they're, you know, in their teens, and they're thinking, oh, I'm not like 13. I'm going to, have to wait five years before I can go to university. Yeah. Something like Impact Gamers, they can go there and they can already be mentored. It may even be that by the age of 18. They've already figured out exactly what it is, rather than yeah. wait till they get to university. Yeah, to, to figure that out. Yeah, no, that's the danger, isn't it? Is sort of that uh, if you if you wait till university to try things out, that, like you said, it's a huge it's a huge commitment, and, and it's uh, a big risk as well to yeah. then find out no, actually, I chose the wrong course, and it's not yeah. so easy to start all over again. So, how do people find out more about the opportunities at Impact Bradford, Impact Games Impact Bradford? Games. Frankfurt. Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, Facebook is um, sort of a useful way that we communicate. Uh, we're Impact Gamers BFD for Bradford. Um, so somebody could go on the Facebook page and there's, a, there's like an instant message chat yeah. thing. You can okay, so that's that's one way. Oh, and, and we we you don't need to. So to be part of Impact Gamers, you don't need to be part of Impact Gamers. So on our website, ImpactGamers.net, um, you might find some tutorials or find us on YouTube. You might follow them and get stuck send us an email like we're not <laughs> we're not people in a different country or anything like that send us an email send us your file stuck with this can you help me you don't need to come to regular clubs to benefit from any support from us we we our whole thing is we want to inspire young people to create stuff on computers um and it doesn't matter if they physically attend the clubs if they're doing it at home that that's great it well. sounds great so how how much this costs like per month or what thousands of nothing no it costs it costs it costs nothing um we we get funded through um donations through grants we're a community interest company so that's like being a charity but we run as a company um because we we don't want there being any divide it's not that if you can pay for a, a games making course you'll be a better games maker than someone who can't pay for a course or if you pay more for it you'll you'll make better games it, it's not about that. And so our, our whole ethos is that uh, we provide things for free. Um, as, as do many people in Bradford, there's there's loads of great groups running things for free. Um, and um, costs are covered by by other people, by grant funders or by individual donors, stuff like that. That sounds absolutely fantastic. So, so people watching this can find out more about it. They can already engage with the opportunities that are available online yep. and then you know, if, if if it's possible, they can physically go along. They can 
meet others that have similar interests themselves and yep. there'll be lots of obi-wan kenobis there that can yeah, tell yeah. them to steer on the use the good force and stay away from the dark forces of evil well, and... it's all about balance i think you'll find <laughs> yin and yang yeah it's about yeah. a bit of good and a bit of bad but uh, one, one thing one thing that really we do enforce is that the games need to be positive so uh we have no real world violence and no blood no swearing and kids are like oh that'll be rubbish and then they start they start making the game and they're like oh no 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 i'll do this and i'll do that and and it's the, you start to get creativity because they're not copying something that they've just played they start to use their own ideas um and there's plenty you know there's plenty of games that have uh, gone on to to make millions and millions that don't have any blood or violence uh, in and stuff like that it's all about the so, enjoyment of playing so you you mean like pinball games is that what you mean well, i mean i mean like all, all sorts of games uh although i do love pinball it's such a simple... you do yeah, such... i do i do i re i rebuilt a table in my teenage years um but um uh, and we've got a virtual pinball table at Impact Gamers, which runs, uh, which is built into a 1960s pinball cabinet. Anyway, uh, if you come along, do have a game of virtual, uh, virtual pinball. But um, no, it's sort of like you know, you've got your Rocket League, you've got your sort of Human Fall Flat, you've got your uh, Gang Beasts, sort of like Gang Beasts are beat 'em up, which isn't violent. You know, you like plasticine characters uh, um, fighting each other and and things like that. And you know. Most sports games don't have too much violence unless you're playing me in FIFA. Then it's a lot of fouling that happens then. Now, Adam, you you sound like you're somebody who's very, very passionate about providing opportunities for young people, but also you, you sound like you're very, very much interested in, in games. Yeah. If you were ever looking to, you know, for some time just to chill out or hang out with friends yeah. in the area around Bradford, is there any places you'd like to go you know just to, like your game friends you know yeah. that you go to well the, the special treat like the uh the at least annual outing uh for for impact gamer staff is to arcade club in uh but just outside bradford just not very far away just uh in kirkley kirk kirk still kirk still yes Kirkstall. Yeah. Yeah, lead sorry yeah I'm saying the wrong place but yeah uh, and there's one in manchester as well um but it's, they've got is that not board. just full though of like people of a certain age reliving all their nostalgia of Pac-Man and Space Invaders, no? At certain times of the day. I think if you stay there after 10 o'clock, you've only got the over 40s, but before that, during the daytime, in the daytime sessions. Um, no, so I've taken my kids, like I've taken them like when they've been from age six and upwards, um, because some of the arcade games, they're so just tactile, as in they're just easy to feel what to do um so and some of them are mental there's one called flip the table where you just have to flip a table at the right time <laughs> to, to destroy as much of the you know wedding reception or uh, whatever's happening at the same time um so it's crazy japanese games um and so yeah there's there's loads of games there that are child friendly so, um, so age friendly and i suppose it's possible if you were working on a project or a game like this and it was something you were trying to you were looking for an idea you might be inspired by something you've seen uh, at Kirk so Still. much so much inspiration at arcade club it's, it's ridiculous um like we're seeing uh, uh, reboots of films all the time come out because you have a really good storyline but just the film's a bit dated and so they re-release it and reboot it and we're seeing reboots of games we're seeing the the mega drive mini and the snes uh, mini and sort of like stuff like that um happening but um the the ideas of of what makes a good game um they've existed for a very long time you know so um so yeah got you definitely loads of inspiration and great ideas so that's you, arcade you, club yeah and i suppose to a say, similar extent the games lounge at the media museum as well yep. because they've got the coin up cabinets and they've got some of the old 80s consoles and home yep. computers and sometimes people don't even notice all the artwork on the wall so there's lots of yeah. Um, visualizations from yeah. uh, sketches. And there is um, yes. some fantastic stuff of the original sketches that we do a show called the history of video game. And we take you through uh, most of the games that are in the, uh, in the museum. Uh, and it's absolutely incredible. The, the way that they had not much technology, but made games that were at the time breakthrough. So you yeah. didn't you, this at the games festival in 2020 yep. was it yep. february 2020 yeah yep. we did it. a picture cinema 
Yep. And you had all of the audience all engaged in like yeah, people on one side of the audience. audience. Made our own Mortal Kombat. Um, yeah. Yeah, and there was like, people on the stage taking part and there was people in the audience. Wow, that was like, that was such a, an enjoyable, I, I was in the audience then and I, I, oh, it was so fun watching Great. people of all ages trying to, you know, get involved yeah. in this. Yeah. So that's, that's a show that we tour and so you might you might end up seeing that at some point hopefully so um, it, might there be any other opportunity people need to look out for the future like anything big that's coming in in terms of games industry totally like esports is it's crazy it's it's great like um so we've you've had the kind of the the age of tutorial of people saying this is how you do minecraft well and this is how you you know do this well and this is how you unlock these cars in forza and stuff like that um and we're now moving into clubs and groups working together and it's been happening in Asia. So esports, people going along watching uh, sort of these, these sort of massive multiplayer games where people are working in squads or it might be a first person shooter or it might be rocket league. Rocket league is just like taken off. Now it's released for free massively um, to allow people to um, compete in the same way that a sports group would compete. So it's, so they're having the same sort of social engagement with each other, like um, like we want at Impact Gamers, but this time it's not about creativity, it's about teamwork and play. Um, and yeah, esports, I imagine a lot of the empty venues in, in the town centre uh, could quite easily be converted for esports. And I know that the museum um, each year at the Games Festival try and introduce more and more esports. And hopefully there, there can be venues set up for people to come and play um, to play Rocket League, to play sort of F1 racing is another classic one, um, or sports or FIFA or things like that. Um, loads of different things, but people working together and uh, having friendlies and having competitions. And we we really, really want to help enable that in Bradford, having some more inclusive play. It, but, it was it was quite something, the Games Festival, the, one we, the last one that we were talking about. And there was representatives at the last festival from the British Esports yes, Association. Yeah. And there were, you know, there was live demonstrations, the audience yeah. could take part, and there was people there who were happy to explain more about how to become more involved in esports. Yeah. And the, also, uh, do you know, when we were having our conversation earlier about retro games, one of the things I thought, I don't know if you're aware, that um, it opened about a year ago in Bradford, Geek Retreat, so it's oh, a board yes. game. It's, so it's a board game yeah. cafe essentially, yeah. and yeah. you go in and there's all these big tables, yeah. and you can yeah. you can buy some food and drink, and you know they do they do vegetarian and vegan food as well. Yeah. So you've got this, <laughs> yes, and cookies with uh, Smarties on top, yeah. and all sorts of gooey, sticky sweets that are probably not very good for your teeth, but they give you lots of energy, and you can yes, exactly. As a power on. Yeah. So they've got a huge big wall of all of their board games. Yes. And there's a little corner with some sofas where they've got some um, recent and yeah. retro games consoles. Yeah. So there's, a, there's, I'm sure there's a NES there. There is. And, and they do Smash Brothers uh, tournaments and stuff as well there. And uh, it's just really great to, to – to, they just make it – it's fun to watch and sort of – And, and the thing as well about the Geek Retreat, it doesn't – I don't think it costs a lot of money. You don't necessarily pay to play. All they do is they just expect that you're going to buy nice things to eat. I can't necessarily say that they're going to be very, very nutritious, no. but um, it, it's it's a local business, and, it, and it's, it's great it's if we can to the, to support the things like this. Um, so, Adam, it's been fantastic talking to you. You've given us loads of ideas there, um, particularly I, I, I'm keen to find out much more about Impact Gamers Bradford. So I'm going to go and visit the website to find out yep. about that. And I love what you're saying about mentoring, because I think that's one thing that it's all very well having all these online courses and you know watching all the, the, the YouTubers and all of that. But if you haven't got somebody who can spend a little bit of time talking to you, help and steer you on the right path and making sure that you actually finish something that you started, um, then it, it, that, that's a really, really useful thing to have. So thank you very much. We're going to go off and find out a little bit more about some of the stuff going on in Bradford. And um, just bear with me a moment.